So my first question in talking about equal pay um, is when you were growing up, um, was it ever discouraging for you knowing that you weren't necessarily going to get paid or respected with the same pay as men? And um, can you just speak to how important it is that young girls don't grow up with that same discouragement? Absolutely. I think, I think it's hard. Uh, well, I'm going to start off with the story that I'm not sure what age you really realize where there's a difference just between um, being a man and, and being a woman. But what I can say is I know in my career, the thing that's been the most meaningful for me and where I really started to understand my passion and my purpose is that um, when I was working with Overtime, we put on this event um, for girls and guys. It was kind of like an all-star game, um, but it's, it's, it was totally different in the sense that it was a three-on-three event. And one of my goals and, and our goals was to make sure that the athletes felt so special. Like they felt like the most important people in the world at that moment, um, because we wanted them to have an experience of the lifetime. And especially for me, um, just being able to go to different events, um, different all-star games. And a lot of times when it's a boys and a girls games, it's kind of like they, they have the, the girls play or the women play just because they need to, right? And it's more so that the girls and the women are an afterthought um, after the men. And for me, I was like, well, we need to make sure that we're putting these girls at the forefront. And mind you, these are, they're in high school, right? And um, I'll never forget one of the girls, she was, she was either 14 or 15. After the event, she said to me, thank you for treating us like the boys. And it was such a powerful moment, but it was also very sad for me because I realized, wow, she's only 14 and she already realizes that men are treated better than women, right? And, and, and for me, growing up, I felt like no matter what I do, what I accomplish, it will never be valued in the same as if it would as if a man were doing it. And I think that's that's the hardest part and, and why I love companies like TIAA who are really trying to put women at the forefront um, and center these movements around women. And I think for me as a young girl and, and what was so important for me is even when I had started um, you know, She Hoops Network with Marcus Crenshaw and Overtime WBB and then being a part of Together before I got here to Baylor, it was never that I thought that girls didn't want to see their highlights or didn't want to see people that looked like them. It was just there wasn't a space for them at the time, right, which was really important for me to kind of um, help start and, and really help do. Compare it to someone like a Candace Parker and LeBron, right, as as amazing and as well known as Candace Parker is, imagine if she had the same type of coverage that LeBron had when she was younger, just how much bigger of a phenomenon she would really be. And I think once we sort of understand this discrepancy and as people are starting to point out the facts, especially with TIAA at the fact that um, there's a 30% retirement income gap between men and women and just as far as how much, I think it's, like women, women make, maybe it's like, is it 82 cents on the dollar compared to men, yeah. you know? So, so when you think about those discrepancies and, and why is that, where does it start and, and how can you fix that? And really just us trying to take those steps to one, bring awareness and, and help people understand, um, not, not to get people mad, but just to get people to advocate more for women and put women at the forefront. You mentioned overtime and all the other stuff that you've done. I know you have a variety of professional ambitions for you. It's not just one thing. So how has your professional journey shaped the way you view equal pay? And is it different across the fields that you participate in? Yeah, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's different in any way. I just I honestly one of the best, the best advice I ever have received is from my mom and it's the worst thing 
someone can say to you is no, right? But but how will you ever know if you if you don't ask, right? And I think it's so important for us to have, um, especially women, other women who are mentors to us, right? How do you know to ask for more? Um, and I think even when you go into like when you go to when you go to a meeting, right, and you're trying to negotiate your salary, your salary, and you're so nervous to ask for this extra money, but something that my mom always said to me was that a man would, right? So whatever you're asking for, someone is probably asking way more than you're even thinking of, and you're thinking this is this astronomical amount. But if you don't ask, how can you ever receive that? But to me, it's it's the confidence and it's the history. If if you're knowing time and time again that women are receiving less and you're not, and no one is, is making you aware that that's, that, that that's the case, how can you know to ask for more? Um, so for me, even with, even with my friends, even with the young girls I mentor, when they bring certain, certain instances or situations to me, I always say, no, like, this is what you're worth ask for more, don't be afraid, and also don't be afraid to walk away. I, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing and, and having that type of confidence. And, you know, I've been lucky where I have been able to start things and I haven't, um, I haven't been scared to walk away from things because I know what I bring to, to the table, but really helping other women understand and know how much they're worth um, and, and really for them to have that confidence because how how can you ever know if you if you don't ask right but if you don't have people telling you to ask um or if you don't have people being super transparent with you you can never know that what about what uh tia is doing made you want to join this campaign uh, well i think i don't think there's anything out there like it right and when you think about retirement obviously for me i'm I'm at the early end of, of my career and even first starting out, um, you know, I'm super blessed and fortunate that I have someone like my mom who has made me understand the importance of a 401k and how important it is to contribute to your 401k. And even at the very beginning stages of your career, when you're not making a lot of money, um, any type of percentage that's coming out of your paycheck, you're like, oh, and I can't touch that. I can't touch that right now. I have to wait till I, I'm this age. I have to wait till um, I retire. And um, like I said, I'm lucky because she explained the importance of that. But for me, it was it was super important because like I said, my, my end all and be all goal is to help this next generation of women to create more opportunities for them. And like I said in the be beginning is for them to see themselves equal to men, right? For, for girls to not think that they are the afterthought in, in anything, right? That when it comes to a sporting event that they should get the prime time slot, um, that people should, should be at their games, right? That you don't need to lower the rim the rims and girls don't need to be able to dunk for you to find the sport entertaining. You know what I mean? Even though there are more and more young girls dunking and to me, I attribute that to they're seeing, they're seeing it right. And in order to be able to do something, um, I feel like you have to see it. And if you don't see it, if there's no prototype, then you're the one. And I think a lot of times when we're creating uh, these different opportunities in these spaces for women, that's exactly what TIAA has done. They, they've seen what this gap is between men and women, and now they are trying to do something about it, right? They're taking action. They're not waiting for anyone. They're doing it. And that's exactly why I wanted to be a part of this campaign is because I feel like I'm like them in the sense where I'm a builder. And when I see a problem, I want to fix it and, and I want to help give people the tools to do that. Um, when you hear that some women aren't able to retire because of pay discrimination and that the pandemic has made things worse, does that just uh, raise the level of urgency for you? And do you think that um, by uh, getting, you know, pay to increase with female athletes can have an impact on the rest of society? 
Absolutely. I think um, especially everything that even happened with the women's national team um, and Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan saying a win for us is a win for all. And I completely agree with that, right? As, as we raise, as we fix the pay gap between men and women in sports, it, it's, a, it's a win for, for all women, not just women that play sports. It's a win for women in the workforce. Um, the fact that women have to work uh, I'd say the fact that women have to work longer and, and does that, does that also mean they have to work harder, that they have to be stronger, that they have to do all these things just to get a fraction of what men get. And, you know, like, like I've said, like you said, it, it, it shouldn't have to be that way. Right. If, if we're doing the, the same job, and we're doing it at the same level and we're putting in the same amount of work. And, and if, if also too, maybe if I'm better than you at, at the same job that we're doing, but I'm still rewarded less, how, how can that be, right? And how can we help fix that? And that's exactly the point of what the women's national team was, was trying to get across, right? Was that, um, you know, we're doing the same amount of work. We, we've also had more success and yet we're still receiving less. And so, like I said, a win for them is a win is a win for all women. I wanted to ask you about uh, Sedona's viral video about the weight room disparity um, and the fact that it inspired that investigation into equity. What was your reaction when she did that? And the, what do you think the impact that can make? Yeah, I think... I think it's huge. I think that's one of the best parts about social media is that everyone has the tools to, um, however you want to describe or um, or define journalism. But you have a camera. You're able to report on a story. You are able to give a firsthand account of exactly what is happening to you, right? And, and I think when Sedona did that, it sparked conversation, right? I, I remember when I first saw her video, then I jumped on Together's platform and I started talking about it and I wasn't even there, right? I was just going based off of the facts of what Sedona had said. Um, and I think also it was it was Sydney Parrish. It, it, was, it was a little bit of everyone jumping in on this, on this conversation and the fact that uh, the women's tournament wasn't even considered to be March Madness until, you know, this coming season right now, right? This is our first time being able to say that this is March Madness, which I think is, is beyond me. But her being able to do that and her sparking conversation, look at what's happening, right? We are, once again, pointing out the gaps and the disparities between men and women. So people are seeing this, right? And now, everyone's outraged because everyone is saying, how can they perform in this type of environment or how are they expected to do this when you went above and beyond on the men's side? But like I've been saying this whole kind of narrative, which is that girls, girls especially in sports, but women in general have been treated, have been treated as, as the afterthought, right? And Sedona being able to do that, uh, look, at, look at what she's just, what she's done, right? That was really the tipping point. And, and who knows when the women's tournament would have been considered March Madness, right? Or, or who knows when, um, you know, that people would go above and beyond as they're doing on the men's side for the women's side. But her being able to do that, and I just feel like young girls have really just been... I'd say this younger generation is just not afraid, right? And, the, you know, they, they advocate, um, they are very, they're very vocal about what should be done and what should be done right now, right? Instead of just waiting, waiting for the next person to do it or waiting because people have told them like, well, this is just how it is, right? And this generation is like, I understand how it was, but this is not how it has to be. And it needs to change now. And they've been putting pressure and they've also had, um, you know, um, other players support them, right? Like WNBA players uh, were jumping on. I remember talking to Kelsey Plum, Sydney Colson, and Lexi Brown about what was happening in the tournament. Um, and, and, you know, they were shocked, but they, they understood because 
they said they felt the same things even when they were playing that the women's tournament just was never considered the pinnacle like it was on the men's side. Um, focusing on college sports, uh, a lot of young women, there's been progress made because now they can get paid through NIL deals, but there's still the persisting inequality because men get more NIL deals. So what are your thoughts on the inequality still being there with that? Uh, I, I think it's crazy because if you just look at the numbers, even last year when we're talking about social media and the women's players that were in the NCAA tournament versus the men's players, and I don't know the exact set, the exact stat, but I think it was the top, maybe it was the top, the top seven, I want to say the top seven players with the biggest followings were women in the NCAA tournament, right? And, and so you still think about this discrepancy when it comes to NIL deals or even college athletes, um, especially on the women's side, making less than men. Well, if we're going based off of the numbers, then, then how can that be, right? And, and to me, it's it just still goes back to this, this overall theme, which is in the world, women are seen as less than men, right? So in the workforce, women are paid less than men, which also trickles down to sports, right? At the professional level, which is also then trickling down to the NCAA level, right? And then even high school, because now in high school, you can also get, get deals for name, image, and likeness. And so it's, it's once again, it's, it's about bringing awareness. It's about uh, companies like TIAA trying to get at the front and, and help this. And at the same time, other companies stepping up and when it comes to name, image, and likeness and understanding that if we're paying a man to do this amount of work, then we should also be doing the same for, for women. So I really think it's about if you have the financial resources um, to make it right, to really do that and take that initiative as a company. You just mentioned um, that a lot of girls have more Instagram followers than the guys. So in that way, they kind of are, are more popular than the men. But for the most part, like with TV ratings, men's sports are more popular. So um, would you say that like, um, I mean, I think part of the reason for that, like with people say with men's basketball, like some people prefer watching the fancier dunks and stuff, but I don't really think that that's why people watch men's sports more. I think that they're just stuck in a societal norm. They think they're supposed to like men's sports more, um, which really shouldn't be the case because people don't watch ESPN for sports center top 10. They watch ESPN for shows like PTI around the horn and first take that celebrate the storylines which are just as compelling in women's sports. So do you agree that there's not really an excuse for men's sports to be more popular? So I do agree, but I'm with you in the sense that it's always been men's sports, right? right? Women's sports have never gotten that opportunity until now but even now it's not like that's that's a whole first take segment right it, it they may get a minute in, in that slot or in these talk shows right it's not there it's not a talk show that's dedicated to women that is on prime time the prime time slot for sports and it's it's to what you're saying right people are conditioned that men's sports is the norm, right? Because that, that's, that's what they've been used to. That's what they grew up watching. That's what was on TV. And um, I think it relates back to like, e even when you think about the, you know, the NBA and the WNBA and my friend Ari Chambers, she always calls the NBA the MNBA, right? Um, because it's like, it's, the NBA signifies that like this is this is it, right? When you think of like women's college basketball and college basketball, right? Or when you think of um, even I know with, with Baylor, we dropped Lady Bears, right? right? Because it's, or, or the Terps, right? The Terps and, and the Lady Terps. There's this thing where we're not saying the gentlemen Terps or, or the men's Terps, you know what I mean? 
So I think for me, it's like what you said, as far as popularity goes, people have been conditioned to like this or do this. But when I think about someone who I've brought, when you bring them to their first women's game, and I've never had someone say that they didn't have fun, that they didn't want to come back, that they didn't want to watch again, right? And it's about one, awareness, right? And, and, and that opportunity for them to see it, right? If you, the, it's no difference if you put a, a women's game on ABC and you talk about the numbers, right? Or same thing if you put a women's game on ESPN versus ESPN2, right? And the numbers and when they report the findings and the ratings and the view and the viewership, well, you, you're giving it a chance. You're, you're giving people a chance to see it. I was, as a women's basketball fan, and Zach, you probably know this, but it is a lot of times they make it so hard for you to watch mm-hmm. a game. Yeah. And women's basketball fans have to work so hard to, to watch these games. They're, nat- they're, ar- they're naturally conditioned to have to jump through all these hoops to, to buy these subscriptions. And that's why I always say like women's basketball fans are probably the most loyal fan base because of the degree of difficulty it, it, that comes with watching games. And so when you, when you give them the chance to, to show up and to be able to walk, walk, watch it nationally, and then to also have others come into that, well, it's, it's no wonder that the ratings go up, right? That they skyrocket, but you, you are not giving women the same opportunities that you're giving men. So how can you really, how can you really know? And so I, I agree with you in the sense where it's like, people don't just watch men's basketball for the dunks and, and, and things like that. But a lot of times when you look online and you look at the comments, or even when you hear what certain people say, it's, uh, well, well, they don't, they don't dunk. Like it's not, it's not entertaining or like I could beat them. Like, you know what I mean? So, so to me, it's like, well, first of all, you can't beat them, but also you just have never, you've never watched You've never sat down, you've never gone to a game and been able to really experience what it's like to, to watch women in their prime, in their element, playing at the best of their abilities. Um, one last question. Um, in addition to trying to make women's sports more popular, another way that the NIL, the NIL payments could be more equal is through Title IX because Title IX it makes it so that like, training athletes on how to deal with agents and contracts and stuff like that. Those trainings have to be equally um, applied to men and women. So what are your thoughts on how important Title IX has been over the years and in this situation? I think Title IX has been huge. Um, As we're going into celebrating the the 50th anniversary and everything that Title IX has done and the just the opportunities that we've had as as women and, and women athletes, you know, without Title IX, we wouldn't be where we are today, right? Although there's still so much more progress to be made, it's it's the fact that we've all had this opportunity because of that, right? Even, even when I think about people like my grandma, who, you know, luckily she was able to, to play basketball even back when it was, I think back to like six on six or, or things like that, but um, how, a lot of women didn't get the chance to play sports, right? Because the, the opportunity wasn't there for them and Title IX being able to create that for us um, is like I said before, why we're able to be right here. And I think when it comes to Title IX and, and NIL, I think NIL in general it is so new, right? And it, and it happened so fast even for the NCAA, right? And how, you know, there's there's different regulations in, in every state, right? And there's different regulations throughout every program. Um, and I think, I, I, it is my hope that for next year, there is more of a plan, but for now, a lot of a lot of the NIL stuff is, is on the schools, right? And is, and is on the, the athlete in general to really figure out how to navigate this, right? And for those that don't have people in their camp um, or even 
resources at their school, how how can they how can they really be the best that the, be the best at this and really hone in um, and make the most money that they can for themselves off of name, image, and likeness? It's it's tough, but I think. With, with no plan, how can we expect them to do that? But I think with with Title IX training and um, if there is if there is a way, and I think with with schools, and I know at Baylor too, we've done a we've done a really good job um, at saying to at communicating the same message to our men's players and our women's players. Because right now, I'm a part of a group where it's um, you know it's 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 a representative from women's basketball, men's basketball, football, um, and, and the other sports so that we can all get on the same page so that we're all kind of learning from each other about different deals that, that our players are getting. Um, and we're also trying to figure out ways to, um, to get them deals together in the sense where um, I think it was Outback had um, different players, like a men's player and a women's player matched up, right? And so if we're able to find deals like that and also making sure that the men's player and the women's player is getting the same amount. So for us, um, we have a show with, with ESPN that covers our men's teams and our women's team. And our players are all getting the same amount, right? That the men's players aren't making more than the women and the women aren't making more than the men. It is the exact same deal and, and to me I think I think that's a that's incredible and that's not me like boasting or hyping up ESPN because I'm sure there are other companies that do that as well but to me like I said earlier it is more so about the companies taking that initiative and that step that they should be paying women the exact same amount as they're paying the men. Thank you Chloe I really appreciate it thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you, Zach. Uh, it, it's great to see you. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm super hyped for you. And I just thought this was really cool because uh, you were one of my first um, interviews ever. And then uh, kind of doing this, which is a campaign that I'm super excited about and I think is going to make a lot of noise. So I really appreciate it.